In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and talk about motors. Now, we've already talked about shaded pole motors, but in this case, I want to talk about split phase motors, PSC motors, CSIR motors, and CSCR motors. Split phase motors include some of the other motor types, but this is the basic. It's induction start, induction run. These motors use a current relay or centrifugal switch to remove the start winding from the circuit. Remember, start windings work on a phase shift principle. The voltage from the start winding to the run winding is about 10 degrees out of phase. That means that the run winding voltage is applied, and if you think about a sine wave, it hits its high point, which is like 120 volts, and then the start winding is a little bit behind that. So you never have the run and the start winding hitting its peak or hitting its positive and negative at the exact same moment. And that's to help push the motor and increase those starting torque and running torque. However, split phase motors, it's still normally low because we only have a 10 degrees phase shift. These motors are used for belt drive blower applications in small appliances such as washers, dryers, dishwashers, and some fern older furnace motors. They do not drive a heavy load. They can't start it and they can't keep it running without overheating the motors. A split phase motor looks something like this electronically. Okay, if you looked at the inside of a motor, you would see the diagram on the left. Okay, run windings and start windings. Again, run windings are normally thicker wires, less turns. Start winding are thinner wires with more turns and have a start switch to pull the motor out of the circuit. A ladder schematic of this would show the run winding in parallel with the start winding and a start switch in series with the start winding. Okay, and again, this is a, just an example of a motor spinning within the stator. The split phase motor has a centrifugal switch removes the start winding from the motor circuit once the motor reaches around 75% of its rated speed. This is the part that most often fails when a motor is started and stopped many times. The switch is normally closed when the motor is not operating, and as the motor starts to run, the switch opens. This is a picture of a switch in, an, in a motor that we cracked open. You see the little centrif the switch here, it's connected to an armature. When the armature is in its default down position, it pushes the switch and connects the contacts. As the motor starts to turn and ramps up to speed, this pulls in through centrifugal force and will allow that armature to open. The spring in here puts it back to its normal position. If this switch goes bad, you're not going to replace it. You're going to replace the motor. The next step up, we needed to increase the starting torque as motors got bigger and bigger and loads got heavier. Okay, to increase the starting torque of a, of a motor, we can insert a capacitor in series with the start winding. This becomes a PSC motor, a permanent split capacitor motor. In a PSC motor, this capacitor remains in series when the motor is operating. There's no switch or relay that removes this capacitor from the circuit. Most often, these motors are found in residential fan motors, residential furnace blower motors, and occasionally you'll find them in compressors. But the, motor, the blower motors are the primary use of PSC motors. PSC motors have moderate starting torque and intermediate running efficiency. In other words, they can start turning a relatively heavy load, and they'll keep the load running efficiently. Now, the one thing to note is on PSC motors, the start winding is kept in the circuit. Okay, the start winding is always getting some voltage and current, though it is lagging the run winding by a, by a degree or two, higher than the 10%. These motors are used primarily for small compressors and direct drive blower motors. This is an example of a PSC motor and what you see on the label. Look closer over on the right hand side here, you'll see a notation for a capacitor. Okay, and it will tell you which two wires connect to the run capacitor. There's no switching device in here. It will also tell you which wires are your line and the wires that make up the um, high, medium, and low. 
Again, PSC motors are usually multi-speed when they're in blower applications. Our next step up for starting torque is the CSIR motors, capacitor start, induction run. They use a start capacitor and a start relay. Once the motor has reached 75% of its rated speed, the start capacitor is removed from the circuit. CSIR motors have a very high starting torque and are used in residential and small commercial compressors. You can also see them in beverage coolers, small reach-ins, and occasionally larger walk-ins still use them. The next step after the CSIR motors would be the capacitor start, capacitor run motors. They're the same as permanent split capacitor motors, except they also have a start capacitor wire to them. A start capacitor is a very high capacitance capacitor that will provide the motor with additional torque when starting, but these capacitors cannot be left in the circuit. Once the motor is started, the start capacitor must be taken out of the circuit using a switch or relay. These devices that remove these start capacitors are called start components, and we're going to cover them in one of our next sections. The CSCR motor you will also see abbreviated as a CSR, capacitor start and run. An example of a CSR motor would be this diagram. Okay, you have your start winding that's in parallel with your run winding. You'll also see a run capacitor that's in series with the start winding that is always in the circuit. But you will have a start capacitor along with some sort of starting component. Could be a centrifugal switch, could be um, any other start relay, current coil relay, um, and there's a few, few other varieties of start components which we'll get more into. But the key is the start capacitor has to come out of the circuit. Start winding is always powered. Now, one of the primary motor types you're going to be working with in both sides of cooling, air conditioning and refrigeration, is the hermetic motor. Hermetic motors are single phase up to about 5 horsepower. Hermetic motors are those found in facade compressor shells. They're wired in the same way as any other split phase motor, but the start component must remain outside the compressor shell. This is an example of a hermetic motor. You have three terminals on the outside of the compressor shell, but all the windings are sealed inside a shell and you cannot get to them. On the outside of the compressor shell, there are three terminals. Most of the time, they have some type of markings on them. They're labeled C, R, and S, which translates to start, common, and run. This is an example of it. Notice if you take a close look here at the terminals, you see the C and the R. However, those wear away over time. So if the windings are not marked, you can use your ohm meter and check resistance. First of all, disconnect all wires from it. You do not want to do this with any wires connected to the compressor. Check your resistance between all three windings. The winding measurement with the highest resistance is between the start and the run. The remaining terminal that is not included in your highest resistance reading is the common. Once you know the common, check between C and the other two terminals. The one with the highest resistance is start, and the one with the lowest resistance is run. Best way to do this is run, write down C, S, and R in a triangle on a piece of paper. Make sure you write down each measurement. If you have any doubts, go back and check it again because you can do serious damage to a motor if you get the wrong components, the wrong windings connected. So again, you have three dots or three terminal connections. Take resistance between all three. The one with the highest reading, okay, is going to be your start. So again, we have six, we have two, and we have four. That comes out to this, 6, 2, and 4. We know that the pin across from the 6 ohms that's not included in the 6 ohms is our common. The pin between common and the next highest is your start. Then your final one is your run. 
okay? So you come up with C, R, and S. And it's also important to realize if you add the two, the start and the run reading, you will get the six. Motor readings are shown in RPMs. RPM is revolution per minute. This is a measurement of how many times per minute the shaft rotates. Occasionally, you'll need to figure out the RPMs for a motor if someone has taken the taken the nameplate off or the nameplate is no longer readable. To figure out a motor speed, you must first use the motor labels. If no label is found, use the following formula. Your RPM equals the frequency times 120 divided by the poles. Okay, so the frequency is the hertz of our electrical supply. In the United States, that's 60 hertz. The 120 is our voltage and uh, divided by the number of poles on the motor itself. By multi-tapping the windings, we can have one motor that has several different speeds attached to it. And this is just an example of a PSC motor and how it is wired for multiple speeds. You have your run capacitor, you have your low speed, your medium speed, and your high speed. The low is the longest connection. Okay, so your low will have the highest resistance of the run winding between common and the low speed. Then you have medium and then you have high. And this all has to do with inductive resistance. The longer the winding, the more resistance it will build up, the larger resistance to current flow that will occur. This is just another example of a PSC motor diagram. This is how we expect it to be drawn on any schematics that are drawn. Okay, you see the windings, you see the run capacitor, and there's, you will note that there's nothing between the motor supply and the R winding. Everything you do is in series with the start winding. This is a CSIR motor with a current coil relay. And again, we're gonna talk more about the start components. The current coil relay is the only relay coil that can go in series with the run winding. And again, we'll talk more about that. It's your one exception to the rule of nothing goes in series with the run winding. Finally, we have a CSR, CR with a potential relay. You'll notice that the run capacitor is always in the circuit and the start capacitor is pulled out of the circuit by a normally closed contact that is controlled by a relay coil that's in parallel with the start winding. And again, we're gonna talk more about the potential relay when we talk about our start components. So in this presentation, we've talked about the four motor types, which is the split phase, the PSC, the CSIR, then the CSCR. With each of those comes an incremental handling of torque and running efficiency. We've touched on the hermetic motor and how to measure the resistance and find the different coils or the windings, identify the windings of the motor. Your R to S is your highest resistance. Then your C to S is my next one. And C to R is my lowest.